How's everybody doing? Happy Friday, everybody. Happy Mother's Day weekend. Did you give up on me? <clears throat> I just got a little bit of let it start today. Got a little bit of Yacht Rock Radio going over here. You ever check that, age, that station out? I know, really? I love it, too. Just go check it out. It's Yacht Rock Radio. It's all the sounds from our era, the 80s and stuff. So, happy Friday, everybody. Anyway, I like that song, too. They've got a lot of Little River Band and stuff like that, and I love that group, too. They're all awesome. Hope you're having a great week. I hope you're wrapping up your week and working your way into the weekend. I'm Dr. Mizzy Hood. Welcome to the 15-Minute Rev, and I'm hoping you are having a great Friday. Um, got a lot to talk to you about today. I'm going to jump right in. Um, if you're just joining us, uh, we've got the 15-Minute Rev going, and oh, gosh, I've got papers, major papers and all my notes here. Oh, and that's not a good thing. Did it print off? It did, thank God. So, I had some extra papers print off within my notes. I'll just get that organized quickly. We'll be on our way again. But anyway, I hope you're getting ready for Mother's Day. Don't forget your moms. It's Mother's Day weekend Sunday. If you don't have a mom, find a mom. Celebrate a mom. Every woman needs to be celebrated, especially our moms. They do a hard, they have a hard job. And I thank God for my mom. She's one of my most precious friends. And so praise God for your moms and your dads. Relationships are a gift. Ones to be celebrated. <clears throat> so anyway, let's jump into the message. How's your warfare? How's your warfare going? Warrior? Doing okay? Like the background? Happy background for a Mother's Day weekend? <laughs> so anyway, anyway, I hope you're having a great Friday. But how's your warfare? Remember I told you. I got good news. I come bearing good news for you guys today. Um, first of all, I told you three weeks ago, God told us it was going to get stormy in the natural stormy in the spirit. Has it not turned out to be every bit true? Um, it's still raining here. Today's the last day of that stormy season. So for those of you who have been obedient, you've moved out and through. And in fact, to uh, further clarify that or to prove that you should have been experiencing last week some pretty heavy duty warfare. And that's tapered off this week. Is that not true? That's tapered off. So that means you've crossed over. That's the good news for you. That's what obedience does for you. It pays to obey the Lord. When he says, get free, obey him. It takes you places. So what is today's 15 minute rev about? <clears throat> um, well, the next 30 days, if you haven't heard the Bobby Connor video podcast, go check it out. Next 30 days for intercessors are critical. And so you need to keep your focus on intercessor. You need to keep your uh, eyes on the prize um, and, and and flip the switch off of your emotions because your emotions have nothing to do with your faith. Guys, can you pray for, against the witchcraft, please? Thank you so much. But anyway, what is this week about? I've got a phenomenal trailer for you, by the way. It's called the Battle of Midway, <laughs> and it's highly prophetic. We are midway through out of the old into the new. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Actually, you're over. If you have uh, been uh, faithful in doing what God told you to do, um, that should have taken you almost three fourths of the way, to be honest with you. I think we're farther than just midway, but midway is a good, it's a good prophetic identification. If you want to try to identify yourself with where you're at, but it's, you're halfway home, halfway home. And I, I'm, I'm sensing Lord say promised lands in sight. Lord saying, flip the switch and get there. I was just having this conversation this morning with our prayer teams and, um, Helping them to understand <clears throat> what's going on around them right now and what's going on around some of you, not all, some, is that the enemy's trying to create demonic realities over America. Thank you so much, guys. I can feel that. Thank you. And while the enemy is trying to create, uh, while, while the Lord wants to create in you, through you, godly realities. So the enemy's trying to create demonic realities. The Lord's trying to create godly realities, which is why he's trying to teach you to co-create with him. Okay, right? So when we're obedient and we step into this new place of learning to co-create, rule and reign with God in heavenly places, we're learning to do the king's decree, the true king's decree, right? <clears throat> Hopefully. Well, if that's true, then, then God's going to ask some things of you as he's taking you out and through, which means he's going to ask you to start getting free from some things so that you can... Step in to him and with him into heavenly places so that you can actually experience heaven here in the earth. That's what the ultimate goal is. So that brings me to the topic at hand. What's witchcraft hitting you with, intercessor? Happy Friday. 
you feel like your atmosphere has been thick, thick, thick with witchcraft, you'd be right. Because the enemy of your soul is hitting you with high elemental witchcraft, actually through AKA water, fire, earth, and air. You need to be striking that down. I'm going to tell you how to do that intercessor. Write this stuff down. If you need to go back and make, make the, or take the replay and listen to the replay, please do that. I'll give you the exact scriptures and how to do this, but you need to be striking down all codified laws, uh, codified spells, codified magic, <clears throat> demonic seeds, demonic decrees, mixing the holy with the unholy Bible and the Torah, hmm? layered, structured, written, spoken frontwards and backwards. And even done with innocent blood sacrifices to back up their spells. Macro, micro spells. We've talked about this before. And this is new. You need to be striking down all legislation and laws. Mathematical, physics, geometry, science, elemental laws, frequency laws, universal man-made laws. With mixing those things with magic and spells, demonic seeds, demonic decrees, witchcraft, prayers. This is key on the international, federal, state, city, county, and personal level. And then they've added a twist to this. They've added a twist. Striking down all Native American Indian witchcraft. All their rituals, rites, and ceremonies. They're desperate. So they're getting into Egyptian witchcraft. They're, they're trying out all like voodoo, all these different things that like they're, the devil never changes his, top, his, his tactics. So they're now using Native American Indian witchcraft to try to hit intercessors, to try to keep your prayers from going up. If you don't feel like your prayers are going anywhere, you need to go remove the cages around your angels, melt them, provoke in the courts of heaven all un ungodly orders against them. People don't have the right to order your angels around. They're not even in your part of kingdom. People are dipsticks. So take those things down. Anything... Backed with innocent blood sacrifices. Yes, Native American Indians get into that too. Um, evil altars. Altar ingredients. Nullified. 1 Corinthians one nineteen Shattered with the hand of God. And most importantly, shatter the demonic realities they're trying to create around you. Now, what is a demonic reality? <clears throat> Have you ever had, like you were sitting there? I'm going to try to articulate this as best I can. Hey, Joyce. But have you ever... Um, been sitting there and everything is fine. That's this is why I tell our teams, by the way, to know you're normal. Know you're normal. And I'll put that up on here one day too. But know you're normal. What does your normal look like? What does it feel like? Uh, what do your emotions feel like? It, I would I would try to uh identify those things as being on a good day when I feel uh happy, I'm joyful, I'm focused on the Lord, I know what he's saying, I know what he's got me praying. I'm aligned. I'm aligned. Okay, so if that be true, then what can happen because you are prophetic, you're like a little walking, talking radio tower. What happens at these higher levels when you start interceding at these higher levels, then especially if you're getting cleaned up, you become super sensitive to everything going on around you. You're, sens you're sensitive to everybody else's emotions. And so those critters, those little things like to jump ship and they would, they're trying to attach to you. How do they do that? They try to flow through you. By hitting your mind, hitting your thinking, pardon me. Um, and they it all starts with a thought. Everything always starts with a thought. Because if they can get you to take the bait with a thought, hello, C2 is all about developing the mind of Christ, like that which is in Christ Jesus. It's a refining process, teaching you through getting hit with strange fire versus Holy Ghost fire. You're getting refined by God if you keep choosing life. But if you choose the flesh, then you're going to be digressing. Okay, so God's wanting you to choose his mind, choose his ways of thinking. And so the enemy always hits you by starting with a thought. And he'll, he'll put these insecure things, maybe that things you haven't been healed of yet. And you have to choose to accept the thought or strike it down. Don't, don't strike, I mean, don't accept it. So if you accept the thought, then your emotions get involved. And then all of a sudden... It starts creating this demonic reality and, and your mind starts racing. Your emotions start racing. Hello, you've just taken the enemy's bait and you're all in your flesh by that point. So the enemy's trying to get you then to act on those things to create a genuine natural based, not the spirit started in the spirit, ending in the natural to get you to sabotage yourself or to get you to act out in old behaviors. This is why when you walk through C2, you have to take your thoughts captive. Hence, I tell you in the uh, title today, Flip the switch. 
And I'm really going to stress that today. I'm really going to stress that today. You need to flip the switch, which means the next 30 days, the witchcraft is going to probably be through the roof. So you really need to stay focused on the Lord. I don't care how you do it. Stay in praise. Stay in the word. Stay listening to prophetic speakers. Hopefully they're anointed by God and they've got good roots and fruits. That's the key. And that's going to keep you aligned. Okay. So you're going to want to immerse yourself the next 30 days. And I'm going to hit that a little at deeper level. So what the enemy's trying to do is to take on and believe his reality over the reality that God wants to give to you and to use you to co-create. Not just in your own personal life, but over America. This is how the church got into a lurch that it's in. Because we have three-fourths of the church operating in their flesh. Imagine that. And oh my goodness, are we in a mess? We have all these crazy people. Some of them are even online and they're, they're letting their personal issues and stuff like that. Now, don't get me wrong, because I can get revved up too. So I, own, I own it. I own it. I did it. I own it completely. But the whole thing is, is that it's not a, it's not a rage thing here. We're not getting into it spewing bitterness or rage and stuff like that. Righteous indignation, maybe. <clears throat> but hey there, good afternoon. You sure can. So anyhow, please come on in. So this is the this is the place that we find ourselves in. And so that brings me to my next topic of conversation. It it ta- it we're talking about what's going on in America. We've talked about the church. Now let's go over to America. And so in America we're finding Remember I was talking to you about macro, micro spells and how the enemy tries to release these big spells that affect big people groups and make people act out of character. That's what witchcraft is intended to do. Okay, I've told you about the realities, how the enemy creates demonic realities. How does witchcraft affect you? Let's talk about that for a second. Then I'll get into the topic of conversation with the rest of this over America. But when witchcraft it's your mind. Um, it all starts obviously with the mind, like we said before, and what they're trying to get you to do. But if you have unhealed areas, undelivered areas in your bloodline or things you refuse to own, weaknesses you refuse to own and let God heal, that's going to be a prime target for witchcraft to attack. And so what the enemy's trying to do is he releases this stuff over these big people groups and we start seeing people lose inhibition. They lose discipline where they normally wouldn't act on things that they struggle with. But now we're seeing people just you know, whatever, love and let live, whatever will be, will be kind of mentality. And God's like, no, that's not my way. We see it in the church. We see it on all seven mountains. And God's like, that's not my way. So that's what the enemy's accomplished by releasing this elemental witchcraft on the international federal, state, city, county, and personal levels to force their reality into being a reality. Hence, we have this crazy train atmosphere in all of our states, things like that. We're thinking, how did that happen? What is going on in our nation? It's elemental witchcraft. So, back to America, though. What's going on? With the black hats and the white hats. We've talked about that intercessor. You're a white hat, hopefully intercessor and an obedient intercessor. But what we're seeing are the black hats versus the white hats in the heat of battle as well. And intercessors, this is your moment to participate in history. Many are getting overwhelmed by the battle at present. So they're having a hard time understanding the level of witchcraft hitting them. And that's just one theater we're fighting on. And so the other theater we're fighting on is against the other three-fourths of the church that refuse to align in time with God's heart for the divine. So they're stuck in their flesh and reacting to everything and everyone around them. They get triggered. They're angry. They're just as bad as the, the world. They might as well be a part of the world because they're acting like them. But for the obedient, for those of you who have chosen to get free and come through, The Lord says, your storm is over. You've crossed over. As to the last week when, or last week when you were probably feeling so much more warfare, because that was your midway 
was last week. But we have to get through the next 30 days to force the entire nation back to its knees in prayer, which will bring revival and set many, many people free. Come back to love again. This is critical. The next 30 days is just absolutely critical. So I agree with Bobby Connor on that. And so right now, if you're a front runner, I'm going to tell you, you can do this. You've got this. You can do this. And all it takes is one of you to break the entire nation through. That's how critical this moment is in history. We need to get them through into deliverance so everybody can get free. It's because they so desperately need it. But you, you have to flip the switch to your emotions. You've got to turn your emotions off so that you don't get caught up in the devil's reality. Okay? Your feelings have nothing to do with your faith. They're two separate entities. So you've got to keep your eyes on the truth, God's truth, and what the true king's decree has said to you. And this is only for the obedient, because they are lined in time. Well, so what we're going to do for you, we're going to keep on pressing through, and I'm going to let you watch this little video real quick, because this is who you are at this moment in time, and then I'll be right back with you. There it is. There we are. We're back on. Okay, I'm going to get this thing, let it load back up. Get our people back on and then I'm going to start it. I apologize for that. Here real quick. We're going to go ahead and uh, play the video. It was a perfect segue in. So I'll just I'll just snip it out as we get you guys loading back up. And I apologize to you again for that. Let's start the Battle of Midway and uh, I'll be right back with you here in a few minutes. situation in the Pacific is far worse than reported. Pearl Harbor is the greatest intelligence failure in American history. Present! Fire! The Japanese are planning something bigger. So what's the target? We believe it's Midway. Washington disagrees. Washington is wrong. Today we're going to be underdogs. Today we prove the American Navy isn't a joke. Remember this moment for the rest of your life. All right. Well, I wanted to take a look at that. I'm sorry for the interruption while ago. I'm going to have to splice that out and I'll, I'll put the two together. So I'll then re upload it um, as a whole video. But I apologize for the interruption while ago. Um, I probably have too many stuff on my hard drive. But anyway, welcome back. Um, I want to really encourage you guys. I played that for a specific reason. And it's for intercessors to let you know that you're midway through your battle. Probably over almost three-fourths of the way through the battle. And so that's part of what you're dealing with. And I, I read that specific part about intercessors crossing over. Um, and, and trying to show you that you have to keep your eyes of truth on God's truth and what the true King's decree has said about you and where you're going, because I want to encourage you to let you know that you can do this. You can do this. The next 30 days are highly critical. Okay. And, and that's why I told you I'll, I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll go ahead and put the two videos together. So it's a continuation 
and there's no disruption. Go back and listen to the replay. I apologize. But um, anyway, so keep pressing as we maneuver out of the old and into the new. Out of the old system of death and religion so that many, many, many can come back to love. That's what God's ultimate goal is in this. Um, I want to encourage you too, because the last three days, I've been sensing a shift in this nation and an excitement building. There's an excitement building. And I was trying to just kind of hold my bearings about it because I really wasn't sure if I was hearing the Lord correctly. So I was letting it unfold, which is hopefully what we do as prophets. But I was just kind of asking the Lord about it. What is this? You know, what's going on here? And he said, the battle shifted. The battle in the nation has shifted in your favor. It's in the White Hat's favor right now. And, you know, I had to jump up with joy, but it also let me know that things are heating up in the spirit. That's why you're sensing a heating up in the spiritual warfare right now. Not only we stepped into t- into C2, we've stepped into the highest point of this battle. And so for the next 30 days, if God tells you to stay home, obey him. Obey him. Stay close to home for your own safety because I know that here in Texas, we've already had two false flags and we're having major issues caused by the black hat military. So you want to obey the Lord. It pays to obey. And what I've experienced and observed is those that stuck are stuck in the flesh um, aren't going to understand you with where God has you right now. If people tell you, uh, oh, let's go do this, let's go do that, and you're like, no, I can't go. They're going to treat you like you're kind of weird. And so I'm staying close to home. I'm going to really just tell you to test the spirit on that, pray about that. But that's what God's told me to do. And I, and I just want you to stay safe. But you need to understand what God is showing you. But the Lord is saying in this hour that we're dealing with three-fourths of the church and the population in the natural that really aren't able to hear the truth about what's going on around them. And so their, their lens is clouded, and they aren't walking in truth. But this is why God told us to get free to begin with, right? And so he saw this warfare that was coming at us that we're currently walking through. Remember, he's omniscient. So he's already there. He's already in the battle ahead. That's why it really pays to obey, which brings me to the message that I have for you. And it's based on 1 Samuel 12, 1 through 13, 23, which is based on coronation, revival, and farewell. And I thought that to be a very, very odd topic when God gave me that today. Coronation, revival, and farewell. And it was actually about a passage where Samuel is trying to explain to the people of Israel This is for the church, by the way. How their flesh had gotten in the way of what their real needs were. And he wanted them to understand the greatness of their sin for choosing their flesh over the spirit. And this is what got them stuck underneath the apparatus of religion. Hence, three-fourths of the church are also stuck here. And it's indicative of being under the flesh or under an earthly person who chooses to stay in their flesh to lead them instead of stepping up into the spirit of God and helping them to step up into the spirit of God where they could have walked in the spirit in all things and avoided catastrophe hence we see three-fourths of the church into a in a big big mess right now so the greatness of their sin was in chasing after other gods or idols i.e the flesh just like America has done where God saw the obedience of a few like he did in Abraham's day. And he said, I'll save a nation. I'll still save a nation for a few good men and women, which called for a new dedication. And it called for a revival. Is that where we're not today? And there were three things that they had to deal with in coming back to the Lord. And they had one of the, the biggest thing was in looking at their own witness. And this includes even godly leaders or people who claim, claim to be Christian. If you claim to be Christian and to be God's child, you need to walk your walk. Because this is a level where we don't want to be just, just be talking a talk, if I can speak. But the key theme here occurred when people had to inspect their witness. What kind of a walk with Christ did they reflect? Did their did theirs reflect one of the flesh or did they truly honor God? Did they honor their flesh or did they honor the king? 
So, which extended even into their leaders, which is in America and all seven mountains at present. So, this is the case where many people had rejected a proven godly leader. Samuel wanted to bring in one of his sons, if you knew anything about this passage. But they wanted an earthly king. So, God said, okay. Okay, I'll bring you in. And hence, they got stuck underneath the apparatus of religion. They got a religious person. So, their devotion, basically, was not really strong. And so, then they had to... Look back at their witness of history. And this is where the Lord showed Israel, and he's showing certain sheepfolds today, that when they obey the Lord's ways, he backs them. But when they, obey, when they rebel against the Lord, his hand is against them. And so this is where we... Understand the secret to our success, then, is we're going to be moving forward in the Spirit and moving on the spiritual level. Understanding what God's calling us to do. And it's the same success God gave to Joshua and to David when they were stepping into battle and whatnot. And they were learning to walk by the Spirit and not by the flesh. And so the same thing He's also giving to you. This is the same thing He's also giving to you. And it was seen as King Saul was beginning to get caught up in sin. This this rebellion was in King Saul's era where he was caught getting caught up in sin. And so then we see it through God's power where God's differentiating the obedient from the disobedient. And it's not an arrogant thing. This is what he gave me literally to say today. Um, and it's through the Bible. Go read the passage. It's in this passage, 1 Samuel 12, 1 through 13 through 23. And so God is trying to differentiate, I feel like in this hour, that it does pay to serve God. It pays to obey him when he tells you to do something. Even if you don't like what he says, even if you disagree with what he says. It's the same mindset that actually goes on in the military. If you know anything about the military, you know, if you're at the lower rungs of the ladder in the military, your upper chain of command usually doesn't really give a rip about what you think. Okay. And it's because they don't really care about your input. They don't really care about what you think they should do. Because they have a little bit more privy to information than you. And so they're just asking you to obey. And I feel like this is the same thing God is telling us today. He's telling us, you know, I'm omniscient. I see everything. And I really don't care about what you have to say. With my little speck of power that I've implemented to you in this hour. The Lord's saying, I'm just telling you to, to obey. Obey me. Do things my way. So this is what we're seeing. And this is what we saw in Israel's day <clears throat> from the obedient then, and the obedient now who are aligned. And it was a unique time for Samuel because he was serving the Lord and he got to see some unusual things in his obedience. Have you not been able to see some unusual things? Like with the last weather patterns we've just seen the last three weeks. That was very, very unusual. But that's what happens when you stay aligned with God. We get to see the miracle signs and wonders. And so that's part of our walk. And then the last thing we get to be a witness to is the witness of our covenant with God. He's trying to differentiate between when you walk in the flesh, you're usually always breaking covenant as opposed to walking by the spirit where God says, if you'll do things my way, I'm committed. I'm committed. I won't be against you. But when you work against yourself, I have no choice but to let you go your own way. You've got free will. So in Israel's day, it was where the people had forsaken God. And you know what's good about God? He never forsakes us. He never forsakes us. Even in our rebellion, he's going to try with all of his might to get us to listen. He will try to exhaust all grace possible to get you to listen like he did with Saul. Because believe it or not, God loves Saul. And so for some... In Saul's time, they had begun to seek the Lord and what the true king had to say about their lives, the, tr tr the true Lord. Hence, their lives had begun to realign with time. And if you know anything about Saul's time, then Saul was starting to lose members of his army because they were starting to listen to the Lord. And, and he was still trying to formulate an earthly army at this point. He's trying to literally stand up and, and create an army against God. Well, it was actually against his, for, his foes in the natural. But he might as well have been fighting God because God allowed these foes to show up. So that was his crisis. 
was demanding his own way and getting in God's way because he was so in the flesh. He was so in the flesh. And this is what happens. These are demonic realities that pop up in and around us because we, when we demand our own way, love never demands its own way, by the way. But when we demand our own way, God's like, okay, you've just stepped into a demonic reality. You're acting out on your flesh. I'm going to have no other choice but to let you do it. So this is what's actually happening to the church and church leaders today. But Saul failed because he failed to act decisively. And then his own son came in who declared war on the Philistine garrisons. And then Saul takes credit for it and his need to satisfy his flesh. It was always about his flesh. It's everything is about him. All about me, all about me, all about me mentality. When people who are walking by the spirit and they know love is others oriented, they know God's a team player. He's looking out for the big picture. He's looking out for everybody. Not just a few people. He wants big picture to come to pass. Hello, our nation. We're trying to get our freedoms back. Then we have these people stuck in their flesh and they're like, no, I'm, it's all about me. It's all about me. It's all about me. And God's like, get out of the way. I'm trying to help you get your nation back. Being so self-focused. So then Saul failed to inspire the people to join him in the proper fight. Because he was so stuck on himself. And then his last or his second to last failure was he had no patience. He had no patience with God and he failed to wait, which was the first step in his rupture with Samuel, the prophet. Samuel was watching all of this. Do you know anything about the word of God? It states that when you listen to the prophets, you're blessed. And, and I just actually had this conversation this morning, too, with our teams and telling them, you know, the problem in the church today is because we are such an impatient society and people have this McDonald's drive through mentality where they want everything now, everything yesterday. I want it yesterday. And God's like, good luck. I'm not on your time clock. I'm on mine. Guess who's, and guess what? You're on mine. You're on mine. And so Samuel was watching all this go on and he knew that patience was a mark of good character and he was starting to see Saul's character fail. And he was starting to see who he truly was. And then Saul's final nail in his coffin was when he failed to tell God the truth when God already knew the truth. Are you honest with God? When you fail, are you honest with God? You get in your flesh? Are you quick to repent like David? Because unlike David, when David sinned, at least he came to God with confession. Where unlike Saul, he came to God with He never owned his crap. And I'll call it what it is. It's crap. You own your stuff. Because at this level, I told you that the spiritual level has so changed from last season those of you who've stepped out of the old and into the new but stepping up into the spiritual level comes with a high price because what you did in last season you cannot do in this season god is saying it's either my way or hit the highway or i will spew you out if you don't get yourself judged first Saul got himself judged matter of fact because he reverted to witchcraft we see so many people who are so Desperate for power, they will compromise God's ways, God's truth, and they will get into witchcraft. Some literally going back to their cultures, practicing witchcraft in their cultures, i.e., voodoo, Native American Indian, witchcraft. I'm not saying they're all like that, but yes, it's prevalent in some of these cultures. Um, it's Santeria, we have it in the Hispanic culture. What is another one? Uh, we've got Haitian voodoo, that's in the American. Uh, African-American culture, too. We've just, and we've got a great, the, your traditional cult witchcraft, Satanism. And so people are vying then, what I see. We see people vying for power because they refuse to submit to a power greater than themselves because of that McDonald's drive-through mentality. 
They're not willing to do what God tells them to do so that he can tabernacle over them and help them. But in this hour, God's saying, Christian, how's your witness? How's your witness? Do you own your bad behaviors? Because if you want to step into your new, you're going to have to clean up the old with God, which means you need to own it and be accountable. Because that's godly. What got King Saul into trouble, actually, did you know that Samuel was his best friend at the time? What got King Saul into trouble occurred when he lied to his best friend and it cost him his crown. Because Samuel was true to God. And so this is where we find ourselves <clears throat> in this hour. People are literally having to lay down relationships in order to be true to God. And you may find yourself there. You may find yourself there. Because, sorry, my glasses are cockeyed. Um, but this is what happened with, between Saul and Samuel because Samuel wasn't going to compromise God's truth. He wasn't going to get caught up with him in his flesh. He was not going to be a yes man. An attaboy. Oh, it's okay. I'm your friend. I'm going to agree with you because I'm your friend. I'm going to let you keep sinning. I'm going to let you go to hell. That's not a friend. My friends, <clears throat> a true friend, tells you the truth. Better are the wounds of a friend than the wounds of an enemy. And so God knew at this point, because of Saul's behavior, that Saul would do it again. He had the opportunity. He was omniscient, and God couldn't have that, so Saul lost his portion kingdom. God knew that Saul was more sold out to his flesh than he was the true and living God. Are you? He's testing us in this hour. Which brings us to John 7, 1-30, through 30, where it's talking about using Jesus' brain and not your own. I thought, wow. Wow, that's a way to say that. It's kind of rude, God. It's kind of rude. He said, just listen and keep, keep marching. And so, Lord's saying, basically, I don't want you thinking like the world thinks. I want you painting my mind like C2 trains you to do. Taking your thoughts captive when strange fire hits you. Stepping into Holy Ghost fire or, or life versus death. He wants you to choose life. He's trying to teach us to choose life again. If we, if we truly want to come back to him. So what's happening then, and it's what Jesus did, by the way he lived his life, he didn't live his life on his own timetable. If you know anything about Christ, he was on the Father's divine timetable. And he knew what time it was. As should we. And when we stay aligned with God spiritually, it keeps us from being earthbound. It keeps us out of the flesh. If we want to walk in divine places, we have to give up our own ways in order to do so, lest we stay stuck. But this is what the world does. And it's also why they live on a different spiritual page from us. You understand or do you see that in this day and time i do i see it in the church i see it in all seven mountains i see it everywhere where people they just don't get you they're just like i don't know why why would you think like that with some of these issues we see going on today via or dealing with identity and things like that and it's like why would you think that why can't you just accept and it's like because i'm not living your lie with you your dna shows who you are you were marked from birth who you are so yeah, I'm not living your lie with you. I'm not going to live in this demonic reality with you. Sorry. But we see it in the world. And they seek advice through their flesh, which is based in their emotions, by the way. Non-truth based. Because they're stuck in their flesh. And when you choose to walk in the flesh versus Christ, you get what comes with it. But when you get rid of your flesh, you begin to see in all truth. 
and you start drawing people like that to you. The Spirit starts bearing witness with the Spirit, which helps you to become seated beside Him in heavenly places with a bird's eye view. And when we live on God's schedule, we're always guaranteed to have His help because you're staying seated beside Him in heavenly places. Hence, He sees what you need. So, what we're seeing today then are people in the church who just want to be entertained or in the world who just want to be entertained where we become a very entertain or entertainment mode society. And that's the expectations. And so when the fivefold stands up in front of them or God in them through the fivefold, this people group, instead of understanding that God is not here to entertain them, he's here to help you change, become more like him. Hence, we see people getting offended with prophetic truthers. And now we see them because they've chosen to stay on the lower sides of the mountain. They're being badly beaten in this spiritual war for staying in fleshly behaviors. God warned you. He told you for three years this would happen because he knew this was coming. But now they're angry. But not with you or I, but with God, because of their own disobedience. And you know, I know that this is a intense conversation again for a Friday. Our, our conversations are getting kind of intense lately. Um, but I do feel like God is trying, he's desperately trying. I feel like he's shaking that three-fourths of the body, shaking them, trying to get a few to come back into their right mind. And hence, he keeps clanging them with the truth and saying, come on, come on, come on. I want the best for you. And it's not under a spirit of death or under an apparatus of death. I'm trying to help you come out and through. So, for the obedient, if your warfare has gotten dangerous, with the enemy trying to manifest around you physically, maybe through Greek car accidents or false flags showing up that's because you've chosen to align bring God's spirit and his kingdom of love back you've chosen to step into a place very few do good for you which brings us to Psalms 108 1 through 13 I know it looks like we've been going about 25 minutes I'm going to uh, splice the other video put them together and it'll be a whole uh, video. You guys can go back. Give me about, give me until tomorrow before you watch the replay. I'm going to go watch the replay. Because there's a trailer on there for the Battle of Midway. And it's phenomenal about where intercessors are at right now. And, it, and it's really depictive where you are at. Your battle and your uh, journey forward. And your, it says, you know, I hear what the Lord is saying prophetically. So I'm hoping I'm not adding to, I'm not trying. But to me, it seems. We are farther along than just midway. I say that respectfully. But he knows better than I. So I'll go with what he says. So for the obedient though, if your warfare has gotten crazy, that's why. Brings us to Psalms 108, 1 through 13. And it talks about why the obedient confidence in God. I don't know why you're so confident when you've chosen to align. This is what obedience does for you. Because like David, this is what confidence and obedience and true alignment gives to you. If you know anything about David, David's walk was pretty tumultuous because he had some hangups. He had to get free from some things. And, but in the middle of all of his warfare, he had the ability to praise God. Because he had a steadfast heart and he knew who was for him. He knew God was with him. And he was a man after God's own heart with full confidence in what God told him. He chose to believe. And there was no wavering because confidence gives you something to sing about. Would you not agree? So you stay aligned with God, with God's reality versus the enemy's reality of once he, what he wants to bring to pass in thee. And the Lord's saying, 
I, I've been trying to show you all along, even your prophets, and they keep choosing their old song, and so they're staying underneath this apparatus of death, this apparatus of religion, because they refuse to get free from a few things. The Lord says, I went to a people group who were unknown to thee, and I raised up them because I knew they would listen to me. The second thing David gleaned from confidence, he said, I will listen. I'm going to listen. And so he sought the true king's decree. Then he listened. Imagine that. He listened. He didn't go all in with this gimme, gimme, my name is Jimmy. But he took his time to see what God had to say about a thing. And whether it be for warfare or personal issues, and you can do that too because it gives you assurance. You understand what the true king's decree does for you? You know how the Bible says all it takes is one word from God to change your life. One time, one time. Why do you think people go seek after the prophets? And if you're a five-fold minister, hello, you are one too. You have the same capacities as me or anybody else. But what I've learned about seeking the true king's decree things sometimes god won't tell me immediately i'll have to seek him for a few days on something i'll just wait i'll just wait seek him in praise seek him in praise seek him in praise and finally he gives me and i love it when he talks to me in great joy and i walk in unbelievable comfort i walk believable confidence it gives me a lot of joy but that's what getting the true king's decree does this is what gave david confidence so David then made the statement, if you know anything about him, go read the Bible in this, in this passage. He said, I will conquer. I thought, well, that's pretty bold. It's because David had confidence in God. And hence he trusted him to lead him into battle. Because when you get the true king's decree, you know what to do. You know what to pray. You know how to follow God in his ways. And so he was always given victory. God's hand wasn't against him. It was for him. He fell against the king. <clears throat> he didn't follow his own ways. And he knew, even when his... I even want to say before I wrap this last thing for him, because it was true for David then, and it's true for you today. But David knew, even in his sinning, if you know anything about David, he knew to go immediately to God. That's his... He knew immediately to get right with God. And he did, but it still cost him something. And he lost his child. Firstborn child from this. So, you know, everybody's always in the grace thing. I'm not trying to get off on a big path, but I think this is the mistaken understanding or misunderstanding of the church where we don't understand that sin costs you. Sin costs you some, something. It always costs something. It's like obedience will cost you something just in a different reality. But sin and obedience create two different realities. Do you understand that? David knew this versus what Paul thought he knew. The flesh is always so sure of what it thinks it knows, and it's usually based in all these negative characteristics, usually demonically bound, where hopefully when you're walking by the Spirit, you see what God sees. And you see the reality of when God tells you to do things, you, you realize the end from the beginning. You're like, ooh, that could take me somewhere bad. I'm not going there. But this is a time, and, and I'm not trying to beat anybody up, this is literally, I was dreading kind of doing the 15-minute rap because I thought, God, are you going to give me a good message to where it's not so hard on your people? I mean, because it bothers me. I'm sorry. It does bother me. But I have to be obedient as a prophet. I mean, I have to. Because it's not on you. It's on me. If I don't obey, it's on me. Your blood is on my hands if something happens to you. And I'm not going to hell for you or anybody. But it's important in this day and time when we learn to step up in these higher places of the spirit that we understand it's going to cost you something and if you choose to stay in your own ways it's going to cost you something because your ways aren't god's ways and so 
That leads me to Proverbs 15, 4, where it talks about a gentle tongue is a tree of life, but perverseness in it breaks the spirit. Never heard that before, but it says a gentle tongue is a tree of life, but perver- perverseness in it breaks the spirit. Meaning if you add your flesh to it, it's going to break somebody's spirit or your own. And then it says a family of gentle speech <clears throat> or a church where people can speak kindly an office with such conversation is like a garden of paradise where one would want to live forever. And then amazing. Operating in God's love. If you know anything about love, love covers a multitude. People that operate in the good, the pure, and the lovely. And I have to say this because our teams, and I'm not bragging, but I'm bragging on them. And I don't want to brag. I'm I'm saying this, giving glory to God for this, actually, because I look at our teams, and when we started off, and God's been very, very strict with us about not tolerating the spirit of Jezebel. He's getting very strict with the church about it. He says not to tolerate it, not in your congregations, because he knew the damage that demon could do. And when we started off, I mean, I know people have stuff, but we had things happen where people came in and people wanted to do their own thing. And God's like, no, you can't do that. That's not the mandate of this ministry. We try to quickly help them get into deliverance or they had to leave. And they usually got offended with the truth and they left. And God would orchestrate it every single time. And and it really used to grieve me. But now I thank God for what he did because I see what he was developing and I see it now in this new group of people where we have people here that have been here for a long time who have chosen to do things God's way and I see it not just in this people group but I see it in the body of Christ where God is weeding people out he's weeding people out who demand their own way they demand to stay in the flesh as Jezebel does he's like yeah you go your own way then you get to reap what you reap you get the reality that you're creating but I'm taking this people group into kingdom I'm taking them into kingdom, into their promised blessings. And so it pays to obey the Lord. It pays. So I'm going to leave you with that this Mother's Day weekend. I hope you're going to have yourself a great Mother's Day weekend. Uh, Go find yourself a mother. Uh, If you don't have one, go find one. Every mother needs to be celebrated. They've got hard jobs um, and they helped raise you. God knows they need a pat on the back for that. They need to pat on the back. My mom does for raising me. God bless her. So anyway, I love you guys. Go have yourself a great weekend. If I don't see you on Tuesday, hopefully I'll catch you on Friday. But go catch the replay. Give me a day and get the whole replay. I've got to connect the videos. They got broken up. So I love you. I'll be seeing you. Bye-bye.